What up? What up, peeps? We're gonna get into some, uh, I don't know. We'll just see what comes up. Maybe some moon talk. Maybe some Orin talk. Yeah, I'll we'll just see what comes up here. But, uh, I'm gonna show this off first and foremost. Get yourself some noble nectar. Whatever, uh, whatever that is for you, however that manifests for you, there are many forms of this noble nectar. And one form that it takes is the form of the Orin. Your own golden elixir. So let's talk about that for a minute. That Orin. My experience with it. Okay, well, my first experiences with it many years back. Uh, it's a little bit more obscure, but I was also a lot more isolated than what I am. And uh, looking back upon those times, it's like, I definitely uh, have things to take away from isolating myself, dedicating myself. Um, but it was also incredibly lonely, which, which is a part of it. Anytime you're going to uh, go into hermit mode, or isolation mode, or solitude mode, like, yeah, it's, it's going to be lonely, but that's not where your focus is going to be, necessarily, or where your focus should be. Because uh, whenever you do go into uh, solitude mode, it's, it's a time for your inner work, self-healing. This is very important to do and to detach from your normal day-to-day -day bustle, hustle and bustle, and being caught up in your mental loops and programs. To be able to get away and uh, go out into nature, go out into a safe space, wherever that is for you. So when I first started, I had researched or found a little bit about Shivambu. And I was already into, you know, cleaning my body out a little bit and... Uh, I believe what piqued my interest in it was uh, hearing an interview about someone talking about looping and what they experienced with that. So I didn't ever do it all that often when I first when I first did it um, way back. But when I did do it, I would sun gaze and soak that up, and then after I sun gazed, I would loop that. which is something I kind of want to get back into, to be honest. But then, I started seeing more and more people. It kind of blew up, actually, um, in a short period of time. A lot of people started talking about it all at once. And uh, for me, it was uh, this guy, Widu Shivambu, and uh, watching a lot of his videos and continuing to do it myself and then the more the more I did it the more cleansed I got but it's not just cleaning like what this stuff does it, it does way more than what we think it does it does way more than what we can really research about it it's, it's one of those things, like, like with all of life, that you have to experience for yourself. You have to experience the magic. And, uh, it... It's kind of like with, with fasting, or with, um... Dedicating yourself to a practice, it's going to open you, open your mind up to certain things. 
So it's a really beautiful thing to, to witness. The clearer your mind and body gets, the things will just happen. Things will just open up and things will come in and people will come into your life. Uh, you will find people, and this is what happened to me my, my second time, I guess you could say, my, my later emergence with this. Um, I really started to connect with a lot of people, and uh, Zen Atman's channel was a big, big help in this. And I'm, I'm not going to talk too much about that right now. Save that for a later time. But, uh... Then I also noticed, like, the more I connected with people that connected with him, like, I didn't even know at first if, if you know, if they were into uh, the Orin, the Golden Elixir, but then I would find out, oh, it just so happens they are. Like, what a coincidence, I'm sure. So for me, and I still feel like I haven't been doing this continuously now for uh, probably for about a year, maybe a little over. So I'm still kind of relatively new compared to people that have been doing it for many years. So I'm still experiencing like new things with it, um, discovering things with it, things that you can do with it, which, which is just damn near everything. It really is. Uh, a magical medicine <sighs> but as with everything and I know a lot of people don't like to hear this all the time especially when we're in certain modes like there's there's levels and layers to it there's there's depths and dimensions to it as with everything and it's all dependent upon your your position your inner position where that's a and the clearer that gets, the more you're going to be, the deeper you can go down the rabbit hole, the more you can take without forcing it. Because of course there are, there are ways to uh, force it, which I recommend if, if you know you're ready for it. And, and I'm talking about things like... Um, advanced healing techniques, advanced spirit medicine, plant medicine, and even if even if you don't think you're ready for it, if it keeps coming up for you, I would recommend go for it, go into it, experiment, always experiment, do your research for sure, and that's something that um, our indoctrination system, it's not an education system, it's an indoctrination system, um, has, it, it is working properly and very well in getting people to do what they're told, to believe the lie, to not investigate for themselves or to stop at a certain point and it's the same with uh, spirituality or religion to a lot of times uh, I'll be talking with people who have experienced shit real shit but they get to a point and then whatever it is inside of them decides that like that's enough for now and then they're going to sit there for a little bit. Which is fine. To each their own. If you want to take a break. And I've done this too. Uh, I've done this with being on certain things. Certain chemicals. Certain plant medicines. Certain intense in-depth inner experiences. Where I made the conscious choice that... This is enough for now because I'm not ready to integrate. I, I I know that I need to empty my cup more before I can allow more things, more gnosis inwards to integrate wisdom, 
and you have to empty your cup first. So this is where like knowing your limits comes into play. And at first, whenever I would hear that, I would you know I would always be like, you know, I don't have any limits. I know I'm limitless, and this is very very true. Like we are limitless. Whether, whether rather whether you believe that or not, we are all limitless. But we have limited ourselves. So know your limits means know the limitations that has been set upon you, and then that you have re-integrated and re, re reinforced usually by not even knowing it. So know, know what you have enforced upon yourself, know what you are ready for, but also be ready, be willing to go beyond that. Okay, so yeah, this is a uh, noble nectar. A golden hued ale with Belgian yeast, grains of paradise, spelt. That's a good one. And honey. So this is a kind of like a mead mead inspired beer. And it's and it's pretty strong. Around eight something, eight and a half. So it gets the job done. And anything with uh honey is good. Unless it's, you know, bullshit honey. Forced honey, sweetened honey, fucked with honey, fucked with nature. It's it's hard to find things that aren't fucked with, because that's that's what we have been indoctrinated to do. To to think that we need to do is fuck with nature. So one of the things with Orin you will find is um, one of the immediate effects. The more you do it, you, you'll find like an immediate uh, mind shift, and you can call it a clarity. For for many people, it, it will be a clarity. For many people, it will be. Hmm, that's going to be different for everyone because we all have our own levels of bullshit, our own levels of uh, toxicity. And then also I notice um, the effects on the gut, the effects that it has on the smells that come out. And yeah, like this isn't like a popular topic that people want to hear about, but it's important whenever you're dealing with health to knowing what you're expelling to pay, paying attention to, to all that crap that has been inside of you. But it will uh, definitely change the smells, the, the everything that's coming out. It will be more distinct the more you take in the orin. Also, relatively recently, something that I've noticed is um, whenever I do it, and I kind of liken this to the the liquid is getting um, more, it's expanding more throughout my entire body. So now whenever I do it, um, I kind of liken it to having butter fingers more. Things will slip out of my hands more, and it's because like it, it's 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 coming out of my pores. This is what I feel. This is what I experience. Uh, things become more fluid. And I also think this relates with drinking orin and doing yoga, drinking orin and working out. Know your limits for sure, but also test yourself, experiment, see what it does for you. For me recently, it's been um, fairly magical in doing yoga. Um, the fluidity, the flexibility, um, pushing myself. Being at that stage where I want to just flow, I, I want to just 
go with the movements, go into the breath, get out of the mind, but I still have to stay a little bit conscious in the mind whenever I'm pushing myself to a certain extent. And lately, my yoga practices, I've really been pushing myself um, to the point where I have to be conscious. I have to be aware. Otherwise, um, I'm, I'm right on the edge there of like ligaments uh, shredding, muscles ripping, things popping. So if you're gonna push yourself to that point, you, you have to be. You have to come back to the mind just just enough to where you're gauging the feeling. So that's been that's been awesome lately. Okay, let's talk about the moon a little bit uh, and what that does. I, I I've heard a lot from Zen at man about what he thinks of the moon, and I'll just go ahead and say like, and this is healthy. I, I've heard this from uh, Electric Towel, <laughs> Electric Towel. Uh, you know that he doesn't agree with a lot of the things that people say, and that's good. Like, it's good to expand upon stuff and have a healthy relationship with that disagreement to to present new things to the table, new ideas, new perspectives, and then um, and then integrate together, like build upon together your your own belief systems to create new avenues and pathways to navigate these ideas and feelings together and present new things cuz cuz if you're always if you're always agreeing with someone or agreeing with people like not a whole lot of new stuff is going to come from that it is healthy and beneficial, and it does feel good to 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 find people that that agree with you, especially people like uh, I don't know the people that I, I'm finding on YouTube, like Zen, like Mayan Jen, like Skyhopper, like Danny, Skylark, like Joe Mama, like all of these people. Big Nicks. Like it's 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 awesome to agree upon stuff that um, most people don't recognize or see or aware to, and to find people that are aware of that, aware of that, and aware of the inner landscape. That's crazy beneficial to find people that. are also doing their inner work and encourage that with with people with those kind of people cuz i I've, I've been through the gamut of having relationships intimate relationships and it's almost like if you care too much it's to a it's to a fault um you have to be able to draw the line sometimes to realize when someone is unwilling to help themselves and it is it is painful and it becomes more painful especially like if it's family um, the longer term the relationship is it becomes painful to rip that band-aid off to finally be like and a lot of times it, it takes that unfortunate um, extreme for both parties to finally realize not not only is this just not working but uh, clarity like it always comes back to clarity and are you are you being aware and clear about yourself first and foremost about your own inner landscape your own emotions are you owning up to them are you deflecting? Are you blaming other people for the way that you behave, the way that you react? This seems to be the way that most people, the majority, unfortunately, go about their day is that they neglect, deflect, 
what they're going through and they uh, pour their bullshit on onto other people that you know, didn't ask for it they don't deserve it and unfortunately being surrounded by that sometimes we take in bad habits those kind of things and, and do those things as well and for people that feel really deeply whenever we do that um, it hurts it's hell it is hell because we we finally snap out of it and realize what we're doing and it's not just like being sorry for it it's it's realizing what the fucks came over me like that's that's not me I don't want to cause that you know I don't want to send that kind of energy out to people but it's not always easy to have balance in that inner state. So, the Orin is a huge helper in that finding balance, reintegrating, remembering self love. Is there anything like more self loving than taking in your own self, looping it, looping the love? You just experience it. You, you'll realize for yourself what it does. Don't take anyone's word for anything. Experience shit for yourself. Realize for yourself what's what. Okay, so getting back to the moon. Uh, like, It's just been a full moon. I think it's the harvest moon. Uh, and usually it's like about three days where the moon will appear mostly full. So you'll be able to get those that full moon energy within those three days of the full moon that it's around full um if you're around people if you're around society if you're in a kind of kind of a uh profession or job or something where you're able to witness a large group of people and how they react you'll see that the full moon uh, definitely has an effect on people and it changes and it shifts and it's not always the same but a lot of people will say that you know the lunatics come out you know wh why is that I wonder why that is I wonder what is being drawn out of them <sighs> it would make sense that we have the extremes we have the two sides the two poles of the sun that is giving and the moon that is taking of things but I mean as we can witness the moon is obviously giving light but what is what are the properties of this light what kind of light is it what does it do to things experiment with this and this is important important questions and important things to discover for yourself and you will kind of uh, the deeper you dive down that rabbit hole of the moon you will find things like like David Icke like is the moon natural or was it something that was placed there I mean I, I'm, I'm not gonna say I know for sure or anything, but I have felt the effects of it on um, various forms of life, on, on myself, on what it does to fermented things, on what it does to kombucha on al um, with alcohol. What it does to kombucha is it makes it go into an alcohol alcoholic form quicker. This is what I've experienced at least. And, and as soon as I experienced that, I thought, hmm, moonshine, hmm. But with that kombucha, it was, it was by far the best kombucha I've ever made, the one that I let set out. And it was just one night in the full moonlight. And just in that one night, it became boozy, which it shouldn't have in, in the natural progression of allowing the kombucha to ferment. 
in its second uh, fermentation stage, which is when you uh, put whatever kind of herbs or spices you want in the kombucha, and then you cut off the oxygen, and then that's when the alcohol content goes up, and some other things go up in it, increase. But uh, after I got the full moonlight for a night, um, it was boozy instantly. And it wasn't like strong, but it was noticeable. And, and it was uh, superb. Superb kombucha in the moonlight. I think I've experimented a little bit with uh, putting the Orin in the moonlight. I kind of feel like Orin is one of those things that you can do both sun and moon. They're going to have different effects to it. And it's going to be just what you want. But, um, so let's, let's say that the moon does pull things, that it does pull water or salt or certain energies. And then also, like, we have to overcome, understand that a lot of our linguistics and lexicon with the English language is the purpose, is for us to choose sides and to separate this or that. So, like, when you're thinking of good or bad or influence, that's not, that's not accurate because that's not the reality of the situation. The reality is beneficial or non-beneficial. And that is even, you know, you can go more defined into that, which is, it's all beneficial. But as to what degree, what level, but what path, which that you want to go towards, because there's the path of hmm, how do I put this? It's not degradation. It's um, Breaking up of stuff, of um, digestion, basically, digesting stuff. So you can go all the way down that end, and then you get benefits, like, f from the in initial curve. This is what kombucha is and fermented stuff is, like the initial like, fermentation. It's um, very beneficial to have those, to grow those uh, healthy bacteriums and microbes. But the, the more you go down that end, you can get too fermented, too, you can get too much bacteria to where you're o overgrown with unhealthy bacteria. But if you keep it pure and you don't let that bacteria in, you, fermenting stuff keeps things. It, it keeps... It's like a... It's like freezing things, but without damaging anything. So I've had fermented things stay at, at random temperatures, sometimes very hot, sometimes quite cold. And these things have not spoiled. It's probably coming up on two years. Like fermented carrots is what I have, and they they look the same as when I put them in there. So it kind of leads me to question or wonder about uh, the invention of the refrigerator and how that's kind of uh, made us a little bit lazier and forget. I mean, this this whole process of uh, technological advancement, it's for us to forget about our true roots, the truth inside of us. Like, these bodies are the most advanced technological thing. 
And don't take my word for anything. Experience this for yourself. You can experience this. You can experience these things of, of having certain experiences that show you that you, you are far more advanced than any kind of machinery or something that is inert of feelings. And yes, you can liken this to you know, extraterrestrial life as well, because they are highly advanced technologically. It just depends on how your perception, how you look upon it. On our our current stage of, uh, it's more just. We've been subjected to a certain level to where we can't increase without a certain t group of someone's saying that we can. And then, but this is all stuff that's gonna come out in, in many generations in the future. I mean, people will become aware of why it is that we had to go through this. the true root causations. And I, I'm not going to talk about it now because it's, it's just going to make me seem like a crazy person to anyone that doesn't know um, some of these stuff, some of these things. So that's also something I recommend is, is know the people that you're talking to. Um, yeah, be brave. Like, And it's good. To, to just say stuff a lot of the times around people because you never know like what's going to connect, what's going to hit them, what they may remember later on, what they may end up looking into. But just, just be careful with who you're talking to about certain things because the deeper you go into certain things, if you try to talk to people that have no idea, who are like indoctrinated to the gills, like, they're, they're not going to fucking know what the hell you're talking about. So you got to ease them into it, or you just got to not talk about certain things. you got to realize the levels that people are at, and then, you know, what people can handle, what people can take. So that, that's kind of been my life, is uh, holding back. When it comes to talking, at least when it comes to doing, or uh, that one-on-one -on -one experience, then me and the other, me and the other person, the other whatever, can go a little bit deeper, because we can shed the layers of the mask of the ego, and we can get down to the roots, to the uh, true beingness. And this is also the case whenever I just go out on my own in my meditations, just with me in the wild. It's just me and the all. So we can get down to some uh, deeper experiential shit. And things can get pretty wild there. Which isn't something I'm going to talk about or go into because it's just, uh, realize things that should be kept personal, um, things that are just kind of just meant for you. It's always nice to be able to share those things with others and to connect with others who have similar experiences, but with, with some of us who experience, uh, some, mm, certain levels of shit, uh, it becomes very clear that you can't talk about that unless you're with someone who, who, who knows what the hell you're talking about a little bit. So with me and the moon, back to that, uh, yeah, I, I love having meditations and experiences with the moon. Um, 
yeah, I do feel like it can draw out uh, some of the nasties, some of the gunk, some of the stuff. I don't want to go into conspiracy theories too much here or anything, because, yeah, like, who knows? Anything could be anything. Who knows? It could be drawing. It could be. It could be the Death Star drawing upon human essences, human energy, the human soul. Who knows? Could be. Maybe it's just what NASA tells us. <laughs> For sure, though, it's what you experience it to be in the moment. For you, right then, right then, right there. That experiential feeling, that felt awareness, the gnosis, that, that's true wisdom there. and That's not something you debate with someone. It's not even necessarily something you talk about with someone. It's just, it's just to be experienced and felt by you. By you and the all. And that's, that's what it comes down to, the connection with you and God, the all, the universe. Those are the deepest, most profound experiences you're going to have in your life. Save, maybe, if you find a partner who you can experience a deep love with. And that's not really even something you can uh, put into words. Because you're going to have other experiences in your life where you think you know what love is. You'll hear, this, you'll hear this all the time. But when you finally experience that, uh, that certain depth of love, there's many depths to it, but whenever you experience a purer aspect of love, then you'll know like for sure. Like, Wow. Um, it, it will very much be like, I've been waiting my entire life to experience this. And no matter what, and no matter what comes of it, I am I am eternally grateful to have experienced this. So to experience these deep things and to experience them with non-attachment, and that's that's where a lot of relationships get uh, you get in trouble with them, just because. People become too attached to each other. People become like drugs to one another. And a lot of times it's not... People stay in unbeneficial relationships. Because they're too afraid to draw that line. To break free. To be alone even. A lot of people can't be alone. Because... Uh, they're not used to it. And they're not used to calming that monkey mind. So a lot of things will come to the surface once you just be still and be with yourself. Um, and the longer you've neglected doing that, the more stuff will come up and the more painful it will be. But you need it. You need to do it. If you want to heal, you have to go into the pain. There's no way around it. There's no beating around the bush with this. You have to go into the pain and go into the feeling. And it's gonna fucking hurt. It's gonna be hell. Even if you haven't really... If you don't think that you've been through that much traumatized stuff, have experienced that much trauma in your life, once you go into these deeper levels of healing, of meditation, of surrendering, of allowing, it will show you just how much trauma you've endured and just how much you have to release. There's a lot of releasing that needs to be done. And this is it's harder to do it in cities and around the electromagnetic grid and that's becoming increasingly more difficult to do even finding places to where you're not surrounded by um, Certain frequencies is becoming harder. But if you have experience with going deep inside, diving deep, going out in nature outside of the grid and diving deep, then going back into the grid, experiencing what that's like, 
And then if you've made the choice of diving deep while you've been in the grid, you'll have some uh, specific experiences that will let you know that you need to go outside of the grid to have those experiences. Don't take my word for anything. Just experience stuff for yourself. You may or may not experience these things. But if you have and if you do, know that you aren't alone, that you aren't crazy, that you're not hallucinating, that the things you feel are real, even if it takes some time for the mental monkey, the mental mind to catch up to those feelings, and it does, it does take time to reintegrate that gnosis. It takes time for those things to trickle down into your understanding, for the mind, for the persona to finally kind of wrap around what you experience. That raw isness, it just is beingness. Have faith in yourself. Listen to yourself. Feel. Feel deeply. Feel as deeply as you can in release. Because it's going to be painful. Release as much as you can. Feel as much as you can. Believe in yourself. Because when you can do that and tap into that, you believe in all of us. Because we are all one. We're all in this together, even though a lot of people uh, aren't on that same page because they're just in the crazy rat race and the crazy imbalances and the polarizations of bouncing back and forth. But ultimately, we are all one and we're all in this together. Deep love. And just know that I am with you. And we can do this. We can come out of this. We just we just have to remember what is really real and to feel that real. Go back out in nature and let it remind you of your inner nature, the truth within. Feel it.